Shalom, Gabe Greenberg here, learning with you this week, as we do every week, the commentary of the Nitziv on the weekly Torah portion. This week we are in the double Parsha of Parshat Bahar Bechukotai, and we'll be looking at Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35. Well, for, first I'm going to read the verse, and I will use one translation, which is the Art Scroll translation, but we'll see that the Nitziv uh, translates and understands and parses the verse differently than the art scroll does, but I think it'll be a good baseline translation to begin with. If your brother or your kinsman becomes impoverished, and his means falter in your proximity, you shall strengthen him, whether a proselyte or a resident, so that he can live with you. So the Art Scroll translation, which really follows the Rashi's understanding, and I think the general understanding of most commentators, is that this verse is talking about people near you, amongst you, who are in uh, tough financial circumstances for whatever the reason, and you should support them. And it doesn't matter whether they're a ger, a stranger, a convert, a proselyte, or a toshav, a resident, whatever it is, uh, you have to strengthen them so that they can live with you. And as the next verses we'll go on to discuss, this seems to be through a loan, because the next lines are going to say, uh, don't charge interest uh, on whatever it is you give. So that's the standard understanding. The Nitziv, though, parses the verse differently and says, is going to explain to us that there's two different types of faltering here, and as such, there's two types of responses that you as a Jew are uh, being told or commanded here to respond with. So let's see. I think it's very uh, insightful uh, read by the Nitziv. Hamikra mefaresh shnei ofanei makot. The verse is talking about two different types of faltering. Remember, the opening of the verse was when your brother or your kinsman will falter. So this, there's really two, two types of categories that we're describing. The first, im mate yado, if his hand falters, hainu. So this is what this means to the Nitziv. This is category number one. Sheyesh lo nechassim v'achuzat sadeh be'eretz Yisrael. So one category is where a person has property, has possessions, and has land, specifically fields, agriculture, in the land of Israel. Ella she'en kocho yafel But he doesn't currently have the means to sow the field, to plant in the field. Meaning, that can mean a variety of things. There's a lot of uh, resources needed, a lot of money that goes into a, uh, an annual um, pr annual production, whether it's seeds, fertilizer, hoeing the field, whatever equipment you need. So they have some possessions, they have the land, but for whatever reason, they can't plant this year. Okay, he continues. Remember the verse said, umate, umata yado. So the, the yado, uh, the Nitziv simply means, can mean, in their power. So that means they don't have the power this year for that. And now, the verse continued, yado imach, and they will falter with you. So what does that mean to the Nitziv? Hainu, she'ata makiro v'ragilimach. So he reads this a little against its shot understanding to mean this person is someone that you know them. You recognize them. You're, they're familiar to you. And if that's the case, then what's your response? Az, the hechazakta bo, as the verse says, you should strengthen them, which the Nitziv says means behalva'a, with a loan. So, what's this category? Uh, the category is someone that you know, you know that they have land, you know that they have possessions, you know that essentially you know that they're good for it, that and therefore you can give them 
the loan. That doesn't mean you can charge interest, as the next verses are going to tell us. But you know that they're good for the principle of the loan. You won't just be throwing money away and not get it back. As the Nitziv says, Mashum hachi hikdim hakatuv dafka mata yado v'dafka imach. That's specifically why the verse says that they don't currently have the power, they don't have the means for a for production this year. And imach sh'ata yodeshu ne'man l'shalem. You know that they're trustworthy to pay back. La'achar shira zera tevua b'chuzata. Once they're able to plant seeds and harvest, you'll, you're going to get the principal back. So, then it sees first category is someone who has land, who just needs some startup money for this year's production, and you can trust the fact that you're going to get the principal of your loan back. And that is opposed to the second category, which we'll get to now, which was the the, net, the remainder of the verse. Ger v'toshav. So, now, what happens if the person who needs help is a resident, is a proselyte, a stranger, or a resident alien? Im yamuch ish she'en tikva shi'ishalem. Which the Nitziv is going to understand is someone who, it's not that they're less deserving in any way, it's not that they're bad people, it's simply that you don't know them. And because you don't know them, you have no reason to believe or know that they will pay you back. And all the more so, why? They don't necessarily have land, they don't have farm uh, farming uh, potential. So you want to take care of them, you want to help them because they're in need, but you have no, A, you don't know them, and B, it there's no reason to expect that they have uh, means to be able to use any loan you might give them uh, to turn that into food, to turn that into excess that might be able to pay you back. So then the remainder of the verse says, the chai imach, that you have to make sure that they live. So what does this mean? Az the chai imach, in such a case, this person, you have to uh, let them live, which the Nitziv says is az hara lahachiyuto v'lo yamut l'shachet chas v'shalom. This is a warning to ensure that they live and that they not die. So it seems that Nitziv is setting up a second category where someone's needy, they come to you, they want help, but you have you don't know them and you have no reason to expect that were you to give them a loan that they'd be able to pay it back. So in such a case, what you're commanded to do is make sure they don't die. You don't have to give them a loan. You don't have to help them start back up their economy and their fields. You have to maybe, the Nitzi doesn't say exactly, give them food, give them some tzedakah money. They can't die on your watch, but you don't have as robust a command to help them get back on their feet again. The Nitziv uh, goes on uh, a little bit and says, Umayre be'eretz Yisrael, shachius haragil hayamina karka v'achuza ba'aretz. So he says this, the context of this whole verse is in the land of Israel. Why? Because there, people's livelihood stemmed primarily from the land. It's an, it was an agrarian society, an agrarian economy, and as such, that's why he is able to make this distinction between who gets a broader form of help in the form of a loan and who just gets some tzedakah money or food. V'hadavar muvan sheze eno mitzvah tuluya ba'aretz, but don't think that the laws of lending only exist in the land of Israel because this is not a mitzvah that depends on the land itself, like some other commandments, like leket shechacha or peya, the, some other agricultural social justice measures. V'hu adin b'chutz la'aretz, that we'd also do a similar thing in, in, outside of the land, shechiyus adam tolie b'umanot o b'mischar, in a place where uh, the economy is more based on uh, a mercantile economy, people's uh, t- uh, like textiles or s- buying and selling. Uh, so you would also have to do it there, but there it would depend on other considerations, not on considerations of land, but he says considerations of the particular uh, type, the particular person, and the particular way that they are faltering, as he continues to discuss. 
But that is, uh, that is in summation, this Nitziv here, he takes what is read by previous commentators to be a general, a verse generally saying when someone uh, falters, who is, who is your brother, depending, regardless of their status as Ger or Toshav, if they're in some sense your kinsman, you need to take care of them with a loan. But then Etziv parses the verse differently and says, not so fast. It depends who this person is. Do you know them versus do you not know them? And are they landed or are they not landed? And if they are, then you should give, you must give them a loan, an interest-free loan, because you can believe that you will get the loan back. That's what a, a loan means. But if you don't know them and you don't know that they don't, that they have land, or if you know that they don't have land, you don't have to give them uh, a, a loan because it's not reasonable to expect that you would receive that back. But the imach, you must nevertheless worry about that person's life. You have to take care of them such that they don't die on your watch. So a beautiful, um, precise reading from the Nitziv here in Parshat Bahar. As always, a pleasure learning with you, and we will see you again next week.